Hey everyone, and welcome to today's Tech Talk called An Intro to AWS Spot Instances, How to Maximize Your Cost Savings. In today's session, we're going to be talking about how you can significantly reduce the cost of running your applications in AWS using Spot Instances. Uh, at this time, I'd like to introduce our speaker for today, Alex Fadun. Alex joins us from right here at Hubel, where he leads their education initiative. And with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to you, Alex. Hey, folks. Thanks for being with us today and taking the time to speak with us about AWS Spot Instances. First and foremost, we want to establish why we are having this conversation here today. When we think about moving to the cloud or working with cloud services, we are thinking about scenarios where we are going to be working with elastic infrastructure. We are no longer going to be responsible for buying large amounts of hardware and maintaining them. We're going to lean on other services to do that. One of those services is AWS, Amazon Web Services. And AWS has done the job of buying all of this hardware and then making it available to us as a service in the cloud. When we think about interacting with AWS to take advantage of the cloud services, and in particular, we're thinking about EC2 instances, Elastic Cloud Compute, which are going to be those computers that are being launched for us inside of the cloud where we're going to run our processes. There are two different methods we want to think about when we purchase these instances. On-demand instances are purchased when you need them. They are the same price every time, and they're paid at the start of the hour of usage. The other method of purchasing these instances is known as spot instances. And these types of instances are, as well, requested when needed, but they can be purchased at a major discount in price and they are paid for at the end of the hour of usage. The reason why we have these two different methods is because Amazon is taking on the burden of purchasing all of the hardware and then making it available to us as a service. Not all of the capacity is used all the time. Amazon wants to solve the problem of utilization just like us. And so they're making these instances available as spot instances in the hope that people will pick these up at a discount. And that gives us an opportunity to save some money while still achieving our processing goals. There are two other options that are available inside of Cubal. I will come back to these. But in case you are on the phone and have been exposed to these concepts before, I do want to acknowledge that there is a subtype of on-demand, which is a reserved on-demand instance. That is a type of instance which you request in advance. You can get a minor discount in price, and you pay for this in advance. There is also this idea of a spot block, which you request in advance. You get a minor discount in price, and it's paid when granted. Again. These two concepts are going to be sub-concepts to the concepts that we are currently discussing, but they are relevant to our conversation, and we'll come back to these a little bit later. When we start thinking about our AWS spot instances and how do we actually acquire these instances, first we need to acknowledge that we're going to do this through a bid system. And it is this bidding process where you say, I'm willing to pay a certain dollar amount for an instance, where you can achieve significant savings because you can purchase these instances at 50, 60, 70, 80% discount of the standard on demand price. So this gives us a significant opportunity to improve our budgets while still pushing through the workloads that we want to get done. We can reduce our infrastructure costs by taking advantage of this feature that AWS is offering us. 
there are two great resources for helping to determine the near real time and historic bid prices for EC2 instances. These are provided by AWS. The first is the Spot Bid Advisor. This is available via the link currently on the slide. The second would be the Spot Price History, which is provided inside of AWS EC2 console. Both of these resources are provided by AWS to help you in the decision-making process around the bidding that you're going to do for these discounted instances. So let's take an example of what that behavior might look like. The AWS spot instance will be one based on your bid. However, you will only pay the market price for the instance at the end of the hour of usage. So, putting some numbers to this, suppose you bid 75 cents for an instance that costs $1. Suppose the market price is currently 50 cents. Then you can win that instance because you're bidding 75 cents and the market price is 50. At the end of the hour of usage, since you pay for spot at the end of the hour, you will pay the market price, assuming it is still below 75 cents. Therefore, even though you were bidding 75% of the standard on-demand price for the spot instance, not only did you win it, you paid 50%. So that's a pretty significant saving and one beyond which we were even bidding for at the start of this discussion. So when we think about the AWS bid resolution process, it's important to keep in mind that even if your bid wins, you might not pay your bid value. You'll end up paying the market price, which could be below your bid value, and in some cases, substantially lower. It is important to keep in mind that you can lose AWS spot instances. If we think about this example, where we are bidding 75 cents for a $1 instance, suppose the market price is currently 50 cents, then we can win this instance. However, if the market price rises above 75 cents while you have the instance, or if another user or enterprise comes into the system and would like to purchase the same instance via on-demand and there is no more capacity left, you could potentially lose your spot instance. It's important to keep in mind, you will not pay for the instance if it is lost, but it can have a major impact on the workloads which are being processed. So, we have to keep in mind that when working with AWS spot instances, there is the potential for a spot instance to be lost, and this could affect workloads that are running in environments that we are trying to optimize from a cost or budget perspective. So, on the back of that thinking, let's talk about how Kubel fits into this picture that we're painting here today. Everything that we've discussed with regards to the bidding can be done manually. We would expect to leverage automation to help improve the bidding logic so that we can reduce the maintenance demands on the administration and on the people who are doing development in the system. We are going to be working with many different machines, and they are going to be coming online in clusters, maybe two, maybe five, maybe 20, 100, 400 even. Determining when to bring additional machines online and what type to bring online 
can potentially be a very complicated task. And we think about the collection of machines as an orchestra, because just like an orchestra, they all have to move together in a harmonious way to produce something beautiful. Well, the orchestra, it's music. In this case, it's data. And if we think about the collection of computers as an orchestra, then we could think about Cubal as the conductor of that orchestra. And Cubal, as the conductor, will be responsible for making sure that all of the machines are communicating together, doing so effectively, and making sure that there is the right amount of processing power present in the system to accommodate what is being submitted by the users. And of course, all of this is there to help improve the experience for the administrators and the developers and the users so that they focus less on the infrastructure and more on the work they are doing. So we can take advantage of the AWS spot instances from within Cubal and letting Cubal serve as our conductor, we can hedge against the potential loss of spot instances from within the Cubal product. We can take advantage of spot blocks inside of Cubal. These are not subject to the same loss that the standard spot instances are subject to. So we can still get discounts with stability. We also have the option to take advantage of Cubal's placement policy for blocks stored on spot instances to increase redundancy of data necessary for workloads currently being processed in the cluster. So by working with the Cubal product, not only can we employ a policy for bidding and maintaining our infrastructure Dynamically, we can also hedge against the potential loss of spot instances while we are trying to take advantage of the cost savings feature that AWS is providing us with. So at this point, I'm going to share my desktop and walk us through some of the settings inside of the Cubal cluster that are going to affect this behavior when it comes to bidding and orchestration of the cluster. Looking at a Spark cluster inside of Cubal, and I'm currently inside of the product on the clusters page, I can select the edit button here and I'll be taken to my cluster configuration. You'll notice here that my slave node type is R3 2 extra large, and you'll notice here that I have a minimum slave node count and a maximum slave node count. This is when we start to see an opportunity to take advantage of these spot instances. I can deploy my cluster with a base number of instances and then, as we said, because Cubal is the conductor of our cloud orchestra, we can lean on Cubal to, based on the collective computing needs of the users in the environment, scale this cluster from two to eight instances as necessary. And if we look at the advanced, sorry, the composition here, we'll see that within this composition pane, we have the details about how this cluster is to be structured. You'll see that the master and minimum slave nodes are currently set to on-demand nodes. So that would be the two minimum slave nodes that we saw in the previous pane, and my master node, which serves as the brain for my cluster. And then you'll see auto-scaling slave nodes as spot nodes. And this is where we are taking advantage of the Cubal product to serve as the conductor of our orchestra. 
when we are scaling from two to eight nodes, we can do that with spot nodes. And that is where we are going to see an opportunity to take advantage of the cost savings feature that is made available by AWS. During this cluster growth, we will add more computing capacity and we will do so at a discount. So we are getting quite literally more bang for our buck. Notice the maximum bid price. This is set to 100% of the on-demand instance price by default. We know that because of the way the, the bid resolves, even if I bid 100%, I am likely going to be spending less than 100% of the on-demand price. You could bid more than 100%, and there are some cases where the market can be volatile, and you can see bid prices for spot instances rising above the standard on-demand price. This happens because someone is willing to pay more money to keep the instance than to lose it due to the bid rising high or the market rising higher than their bid. There's a request timeout value for how long we will wait during the bid in minutes before we cancel the bid. There is a percentage of spot nodes, how many of the nodes in this cluster during a period of growth can be spot. There's an option here too, in the event no spot nodes are available at the price you're requesting, use on-demand nodes. And there is also the option here to use the Cubo placement policy where you can enforce replication of the data that is currently on the spot nodes to the on-demand nodes so that if a spot node does get lost, we can retry the task as needed. Notice that under the auto scaling slate nodes, I could change from spot node to spot block if I want to take advantage of that feature inside of AWS. Notice I could also change my master and minimum slave nodes from on demand to spot nodes or spot block. Keeping in mind that spot nodes are subject to loss, we would recommend against making your master and core slave spot nodes because if your master node goes down, then your cluster will no longer be usable. So if you are running highly critical workloads, you'll probably want to tend towards on-demand nodes. If you are offering users environments for ad hoc reporting, querying, long-running engineering workloads, then this is definitely a feature you want to think about taking advantage of. All right, thanks, Alex. Um, at this time, we're going to be doing Q&A. So if you have a question, feel free to submit it now. Uh, Alex, our first question is, when it comes to spot instances, how do I know what I should bid? So that's an interesting question. When you think about the spot instance market, again, keeping in mind that the spot instance market is a second price field bid, which for those of you on the phone have studied your game theory, basically means, again, even though you're bidding a certain value, you're paying a lower value. I would recommend bidding higher than a 100% of the on-demand instance price because probability says the majority of the time you're gonna pay lower than your bid. And in those moments that it does rise above the on-demand price, it's relatively infrequent and if you're sitting at 120% of your on-demand price, you're probably in the 90, 95th percentile of bidders, and the likelihood you'll keep your instance during potential spot loss is pretty high. So I think when you, th when you keep in mind how the market works and how the instances behave, I would tend towards um, bidding a little bit over the 100% mark for the on-demand instances, just for the sake of stability, Again, acknowledging that the likelihood you're actually going to pay 100% or more is very low. Great. That makes our sense? next question, yeah, our next question is, can I run a fully spot instance cluster? Absolutely. 
Uh, that is your prerogative. You, you may totally do that. I would say for environments that are running super critical workloads, that is not recommended because, again, if you lose your master node, uh, you lost the head to the snake, there's no more capacity to control the cluster. It will become unusable. That being said, you could do stop blocks because they are not subject to the same loss. That would still give you significant discounts, although stop blocks are used for a certain amount of time. So if the duration ex that you need it to be online um, is exceeding what you've actually paid for, then you could run into some complications. For ad hoc environments, where there's a lot of people running SQL in, say, Presto, for example, then you might very well run a sizable spot instance cluster because you don't have the foresight into what users are going to be doing. And depending on the demands of the day or the week or the month or the individual team, there might be pretty erratic demands from the user base. So running a high percentage spot cluster will give you the capacity to satisfy those demands and do so at a discount. You don't have to have a very large expensive cluster running for them in the event they need it, you can have a small cluster running and then scale via spot for those moments of growth. Great, Alex, I've got one more question for you. Um, sure. Beyond AWS, is, is there a comparable concept for the other clouds? Oh, that's a good question. In terms of the other cloud services, AWS, has the most sophisticated of these options. The Google Cloud product will also have a similar concept available to it, but this is not something that's universal across all of the different cloud providers. And the AWS spot market is arguably the most recognizable of these cost-saving features across all of these. Not to say the other clouds don't also have competitive pricing, but this has uh, been around for quite a while, so it's probably the most developed feature. I would say that the other clouds will potentially develop these types of features or will come in at a low cost point so as to be competitive. All right. Well, that wraps up our questions for today. Thank you so much to our speaker, Alex, as well as everyone who joined us live today. If you enjoyed the webinar today, we have another tech talk coming up, um, which you can see on our screen here. Uh, and that will be on August 3rd, and we'll be doing a cluster comparison. We would love to have you join us live for that one. We also recently posted a blog on spot blocks, and we just published a new book on building a modern data platform. So with all that being said, thank you again for joining us today, and I hope you all have a great week.